But we're honored to have Dr. Leonard Jeffries here with us. Come on up, Dr. Leonard Jeffries. Come on up. Well, glory to God. Amen. Bless you. I, was, um, I went to drop off Mother Jeffrey's home, and I uh, just went to, dr to, just to drop her home, and he happened to be coming outside in, this, in the winter. And I said, he came to the car, and he says, come on in, and so we can greet you properly. And I had some things to do. My wife and I had appointments. And um, so we came on in, and upon coming on in, stepping into his home was like stepping into a museum. And you begin to see the life works of both of these professors. We're going to hear Mother Jeffries after lunch. And while I was there, I was bathing all of this knowledge, and all of this knowledge, and we know some of the great things he did in City University and what he's done to preserve our culture, amen. And um, I got ready to leave, um, Dr. Hakeem, and while I got ready to leave, I said, we're gonna go now. He says, it's improper to leave without asking for the permission from your elders in Africa. And so Mother Jeffrey was saying, Leonard, Leonard! This is the archbishop you're talking to, Leonard. And, he's <laughs> and he's, I says, no, no, no. I said, this is his house. We're under his authority. And then, of course, he's, I says, do I have permission to leave? He says, yes, but I'll tell you one more thing. And we had such fellowship. I'm honored that he is here with us. Amen. And um, uh, listen, these are rich people. Um, um, how can I say it? It's like there are, if you can understand what I'm saying, their work the, who they are needs a home. I mean, Dr. Hakeem, you got to walk in their home. They tell you this is from Egypt. This here is from, I mean, it's like a, it's a world that you've got. To, and then he told me, he says, well, you got to come by another day where we take you upstairs and really sh and 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 it's just amazing. Come on, just greet the people. Well, family, it's certainly a great pleasure for me to join all of you in this gathering. I was ordered here. <laughs> she said, you got to come, and you got to come early, and I did my best. But we don't have helicopters. I wanted to order helicopter service. It got to the George Washington Bridge. It couldn't handle it. It was jammed up. I finally got to New York. I couldn't move the subways up and down. A helicopter would have gotten me here. But the good Lord said, take your time. You will get there in due time, and everything's going to be all right. So I'm fine. When I heard the bishop doing his thing, I said, let me get in there. I don't, let me get in there. Look, brothers and sisters, this is our time. If you don't appreciate it, don't understand it, you're missing out. The creator and all the manifestations of, of the universe have asked us to come forth. It, it is my brother who's going to have a message to save us and not the president of these United States. Do you understand? So what he is telling you he's doing, I'm seeing it done in my own household. 
was my own partner for life. We've been together for 55 years. That deserves some respect. I was blessed to bring that male energy, that special, special power that the male brings to the table. But that's not enough. That's singly by itself and impotent until the female energy is brought into force with the male energy. So I have taken upon myself the warrior spirit, but I can't deliver without God's spirit that comes from the female component. If she had not been by my side, I couldn't have done any of the things that I've done over the last 50 something. She led the way to Africa. She went to Africa in 69 and opened the door. I was in, in 59. Oh, 60. 59, I was in Europe looking at the European world. She was in the African world feeling the spirit and the power of our homeland. I was getting the mental stimulation of looking at Europe and seeing the Champs Elysees and speaking French. Je parle très bien la français, presque comme le français, and meeting great individuals. I was looking for something black and wasn't much there. When I saw something black, I ran after it. Brother, who are you? Where are you from? And he looked at me, beautiful black man, and said, Je suis Francais. I'm French. I said, he didn't look too French to me, but I, I got to take his word for it. <laughs> then I ran after another brother who looked like he was African. Brother, who are you? When you're in Europe, in Switzerland, you're by yourself. I ain't had no partner for life. Rousing was in Africa. I didn't even know her. I didn't have my biological brother, whose son, number one son, is Hakeem Jeffries. My biological brother was in Germany, in the Air Force. I was by myself looking for spirit, looking for something to nourish me. And the Europeanness was not it. I gave up on dark people, because they were all saying, Je suis Francais. So, I found some, you know, melanized brothers like you and I that I wasn't doing it. But so I said, I better run after some of the, the, uh, the uh, Bishop Womack, my wife, and, and my brother here. Those who have, don't have as much melanin as I have. Ran after them. Brother, who are you? Where are you from? Je suis Francais. Now, my light-skinned brother was my life. We were born within two years of each other. So we have been together. But I'm running after these that look like my brother, and they tell me, je suis Francais. Spirit told me to leave Switzerland. Go to Paris. I'm fighting the spirit. I said, no, 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 I don't need nothing in Paris. I avoided going to Paris when they gave me the fellowship because I had enough of Europeans. I didn't want to even go to Brussels. I picked the smallest place that I, as you had mentioned, I picked the smallest. I, Geneva was even too big. But up the road, up the lake, Geneva, there was a little town called Lausanne that was built, the university was built around a castle, an abandoned castle and an abandoned cathedral. Out of those ruins, I could feel the spirit I wouldn't have all this distraction, all this poison, all these women looking at me that, that want me for the wrong reasons, all these uh, men that want me for the all this knowledge about the European world and not about the real world, our world. And so finally, Spirit said, go to Paris. I said, what? I've been trying to avoid Paris 
all of the materialism and all of the gaudyism and misdirection. And so finally, I heard what Spirit said. I got on a train, left Lausanne, Lake Geneva, went down through Geneva, and then cut through the mountain. There's a tunnel that goes through Mont Blanc. And when you get out on the other side, you're heading toward Lyon. Once you change your train at Lyon, you head toward Paris. And when Spirit led me to Paris, he said, forget about the Champs Elysees. You don't need no Gucci bags. You don't need no perfume. You don't need any of that which they're selling on the Champs Elysees. Forget about Pigalle. That's where the women stand in the doorway, in these half cut doorway. Voulez vous coucher avec moi ce soir? I, I didn't need that. And, and, and of course, they have these beautiful uh, cathedrals and basilicas. And I didn't need that. Spirit drew me and sent me to the student quarters, to the Sorbonne to the left bank, and there I met a spiritual couple. Sheikh Anta Diep is the great scientist, scholar, has given us this enormous knowledge, but his mentor was Aliun Diep, a great scholar, but Aliun didn't stand by himself. He had Madame Diep. So there was a partnership of male and female power. And they had set up on the route on the, near the Sorbonne and the Collège de France on a street called the Street of Schools, Rue des Écoles. They had set up an institute to deal with science, to deal with knowledge, to deal with spirituality. And they had set up a, a relationship, male and female, that institute that they set up in 1947 still exists today. They're gone, but the knowledge that they had put together, that you had to have a larger view of things. You can't have this narrow view that we get when we get our PhDs and you master a particular little branch of something, you become a specialist. These brothers and sisters, this family, gave us a research center, a research institute, and when you saw the great work of Sheikh Anta Diop manifested with them, in order for Sheikh Anta Diop to get a PhD, he had to go three times to defend his research. I happened to have been there January the 6th, 1960, in Paris at that time. I couldn't get into his session because they had called scholars from all over, white and black, to be there for this brother when he presented for the third time. And presenting it for the third time, he, he got his, not just a doctorate, he got his aggregate, the highest degree that they, they give. So, but what a, his thing was not just the historical scientific knowledge, but was culture. When uh, Bishop Walmart is talking to us, he's trying to talk about a deep culture, not a culture of materialism, not a culture of things, not a culture of this narrow knowledge that's been given to us uh, on, a, on a platter. You get your BA, you get your MA. You, he's given us the culture of the universe and packaging it in such a nice way. Well, I can see how, uh, madam, uh, I can see how, look, look at him now. Look at the smile on his face being next to his partner for life. So I have seen my wife go from when she could not move her foot. And I said, honey, you, you ain't going to make it that way. That, that is just, you know, you can't do it. You, dragging your foot ain't going to go into no healing. And she moved closer to the bishop and Lady Womack and their center in Montclair. And she, you could see her change on all the levels with the work that I'm here to testify. Yeah. I'm here to testify that the brother has what we need. I'm here to thank my brother for being there. My wife called and said, you got to come. You don't understand what's happening. 
I dropped everything. We don't, I, couldn't, I went to try to get my phone on, but they said they didn't open until 9 o'clock. I said, get out of here. You've got to get to New York. So you are in the midst of something transformative that is absolutely necessary for you. I'm speaking from you. In a couple of weeks, I'll be 83. Okay. 83. Yeah. And I, I, I tell folks that I'm trying to renew myself, so don't be messing with me. I'm 82 and I ain't through. Hey, boom, whop. So, so we've got to master the real knowledge and put it together, the scientific knowledge, the spiritual knowledge, the cultural knowledge. And for him to even joke about sex, you know, and all of us got to bow our heads down. Because we, we, we ain't been doing what we're supposed to be doing. And he, and, and he, he does it with such grace and things, so you don't even feel bad. You say, it's just the way it goes. But you know, but you can read these magazines now, and you all can get a tape or two. You can get a vicarious sexual relation. But sex is for the procreation of, of God's creation life. Sex is to have a partner so that you can move in the universe spiritually the way we have. If, if we told our story, our orgasms, Rosalyn is going to say, brother, you've gone too far and too far. <laughs> you see, the physical orgasm is not what is the thing. Yes, yes. It's the spiritual orgasm. Yes, yes, yes. It's the spiritual orgasm. When the world was thrown at me because I was raising the truth that we are the chosen people and the world came at me with all this attack and we were in Africa. And my brother, I called back to New York and they said, they're trying to destroy you. I said, well, that's good. I ain't coming home to be destroyed. I got 10 more days on my trip to Africa. So they're going to have to wait. And then I asked Rosalind, I said, Rosalind, a lot of hell's going on in, in the newspapers, times, all of them attacking me as the worst person in the history of the world. No. Rosalind said, she didn't go crazy. She didn't get on her knees to pray, but she reached for the spirit. You see? And I told her what's happening. She said, let's form a spiritual circle. You know? And... One sister had been ill, so we went into her bedside, and the group formed a spiritual circle, and she just took over. She took over and did her calling on the spirit to give us strength to do what we need to do. Okay. I'm still getting orgasmic pleasure out of knowing that my wife did not shake, did not get down, did not get scared, did not get around, said, we, what did she... She took over. And then, because she's so spiritually connected, after we had this thing with the group and said that we're not going to pull a... Je Uh-oh. Jesse is a good friend of mine. But she said, we're not going to pull a Jesse Jackson. We're not going to get on our knees and beg forgiveness for the truth that we felt we had to bring forth. Wow. You see, that's an orgasmic experience. When your wife knows that and can say that. And then to leave the place where we were with the young lady, because our next meeting was with the chief priestess of Ashanti. Uh -huh. And we went over to the chief priestess. And she didn't know what was happening, but she could feel something was happening. And so she gave me seven rings of protection. Usually she gives one. And everybody's happy. I've lost the wedding ring. 
But the seven rings of protection are right there. They've been there for these last, since 91. Now, our relationship with the priestess is because of Rosin's spirituality. We went to Africa with a group. And you go on the trip to see the dam, to see the meet so and so and so and so. So we were planning to go to see the Akasamo Dam. There was 30 of us. We were at a gas station gassing up, and this young fellow came. And he knew that we were in town, because if an African American is around, they know, because the young fellows want to find out what's happening. So he said, where are you going? I said, well, we're going to, to the dam. He said, no, you can't go. I said, well, here's a little guy. I, you know, what do you mean we can't go? We have an appointment. People are supposed to meet us to take us around. So this little fellow said, there is a big meeting in the palace, and you have to go there. I said, well, we, we, we can't miss my, our appointment. He said, you have to go there. How can a little kid like that with the big me and, and our group tell me, order me around? He was moved spiritually. Because what was in the palace was something that you would never see. It happens rarely. The great king of Asante had passed. And a new king, and he had gone to the village, and a new king was being brought from the village to take up the leadership. Just that event, and that's for the special people, that's not just for ordinary tourists, but this little young kid said, no, you ain't no ordinary tourist. You got to go. You got to go. And we went. But we, Jeffries did our Jeffries thing. Split the group up into 15. I'm taking 15 of them to the appointment. That's that male principal. And then, Rosalyn, you're going to take 15 into the ceremony. And that's how we worked, and that's how we've done it. Uh, throughout our time. I'm taking care of that warrior thing. She's taking care of that spiritual mother, creative thing. Wow. And it happened there. I went to Akasambo. She went in to the sacred ceremony where the new king is replacing the old king. And they're together. You, you got funeral and, and crowning at the same time with this concept of the village being key. The new king is being brought from the village, and the old king is returning to the village where, where creation and God is. Now, while Rosalyn was there, she was with our group, including her brother and others. She had, you know, the normal tourist dress and whatnot. But here she's going in a sacred state. Rosalyn has been into this African culture thing so deep for so long. Said, so she even tried to make an adjustment. She had a piece of kenti cloth where you might have it around you if it's getting cold, uh, the region. No, she wrapped the kenti cloth around her because you're not supposed to be having your stuff showing. But she was out of sync with the colors because kenti is for celebration of life and for the transition to the creator. You have the red and the black. You have, there's a color uh, uh, a part of the culture. So Rosalind couldn't get into the red, but she did the best she could. Then they brought out all the ceremonial things, the swords, the seals, and, and the other instruments, the symbols. They brought out the golden stool. And so Rosalind was enjoying all this because she is the deep person into this culture. And the chief priestess had come in before everything because the women have to come with their flowers to remove evil forces. This is alive. This is not something that's fake. The Hollywood can try to emulate it, but this we have seen it live. live, live, live. And so the priesthood had come in and had removed evil spirits so the activities could take place. And so as they were taking place, the chief priestess gave her fly whisk, a symbol of authority, 
to one of her assistants to give to this new person in their midst, Rosalind. She was asked, and luckily she knows African culture, so when she was asked to come out to dance with the priestess before this crowd, she knew what to do. She later told me she had a little trepidation because of some, something in the culture, but she was, she, and the, the, the dancing, the coming together bonded Rosalind's spirit with the great spirit of the Asante. This woman just died a few years ago at 102. She's still alive for us. Her children, she, she didn't, when her children came to America, she didn't send them to other Asante people. She sent them to us. We had developed a spiritual relationship. You've got to understand that we operate on these things. You have to operate on these things. And so I had to give due respect to, to my wife, who is a protective spirit on, uh, around me, because I do the warrior thing, and I'm trying to kick as much butt as I can, <laughs> wake as much people up as possible. But she is the key. And so to have the Womacks as a collective, she appreciates to see their dynamic relationship. Uh, and uh, so, brother, keep doing what you're doing. The creator and all that's important is working with you. And even jokes about these things. And then he's got partners like the archbishop and whatnot here. And of course, he was in my house. So his titles meant a lot. But once you cross the Jeffrey's door, <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't have no, you, the first thing that you see is an African Jesus yes, you do. and Marcus Garvey under him welcoming you to our house. Yes. And then if we, when you close the door, there's all kinds of historical things yes. right behind you. And so the Bishop As Archbishop Ashley was telling you that we had to wait to Rosalind to come back to move through the house. Above the living room is her sanctuary. I would have taken my brother up there without Rosalind's knowledge because he's a special person. And I would have had to tell him, do not tell Rosalind <laughs> that I brought you up here. She used to have on the door, library, sanctuary, and this and that. And, and that was for me. So that's the biggest part of the house, the biggest room in the house. And Rosalind has a baby grand piano. Because she used to be a pianist back in the day. She has bookcases of knowledge that is so heavy that she doubles the books. These big art books and these cultural books are this thick. They're not like my little books like this. So some of the, the shelves have fallen. But she makes sure she just stacks them up right. She's got African art. She's got images. She, she creates a sanctuary for her to do her work. She's got a talent. So physically, she needs to not have that physical destruction prevent her from finishing her spiritual work. So thank you, Madasi P. Madasi P. Many, 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 many thanks. Her work is not finished yet. And even when she finishes her earthly mission, she'll be doing her things out in the great beyond to make sure that Virginia Union and all these other schools uh, move to a higher level. You know. So I just want to say, I missed what I should have heard, but I'm glad to be here anyway, just to feel what my wife was saying was a necessary thing to be here with you. So my words are, are that we are on a sacred mission. 
The universe has been prepared for us to do a special thing. Handle your material things, but don't become the material things. Understand that you got to do some physical things, but most importantly is your spiritual things. And then the key is the heart and the mind. And you just saw an example of a great brother. It's hard for me to, for me, I'm looking at him 83 in two weeks. And he looks like a teenager. He, he, needs to, he needs to package that. He has teenage energy. He knows how to joke. He knows how to, I mean, it's just amazing. We, we need to have a, a study of him and his uh, queen, and we need to have a study of uh, Archbishop and his queen. In other words, you all need to do some studies of these brothers. What have they hooked up? And then after you do the studies of them, then Ross and I will sit down with you all and say, well, what's some, what's some of the things that we, we, we've done? You know, look, you go into the living room. Rosalyn has created a sacred space for her work. She's on that computer night and day and been on it for hours. That's a deterioration of her physicality. That's why you've, you've rested us, you've resurrected us, because I can feel it every day. She doesn't even want me to. I, I say, honey, there's a telephone call for a million-dollar telephone call. I'm, can't you think I'm busy? I'm into my, get my work together. She can now finish her work because she now has a pathway of renewing herself, you know, and so she's created this spot at the house. When you come into the living room, the couch has a dozen linguist staffs. Mm -hmm. And then when you go into her spot where she sits with her computer, there's 10, uh, eight or nine linguists. She has 20 linguist staffs in her personal space. Linguist staff is a symbol of, of the, the, first the spokesperson, a symbol of the keeper of the knowledge. So she has created this enormous uh, process for her to complete her work. The only thing that we have problems with, the biggest thing, is the dollars. The money comes to us, but we give it out. I had to call Ross and say, we can't give everything out. Some of it you got to keep coming in so we can build on it. But people call me from Trinidad. They call me from Ghana. They call me from Nigeria because they know we've been there to help and to do the necessary things. And I'm going to leave you with this. In the dining room, where she has her space, you have a picture of the Shanti King, Atunfo Pokawari II, who was a personal, he spiritually linked up with us over a 30-year period. And then below him is a picture of Emperor Haile Selassie. Our relationship with the king is a spiritual relationship, and our relationship with Haile Selassie was a spiritual relationship. We've been to Ethiopia many times. I have a picture of Rosalind at the Hilton Hotel shooting the emperor, greeting seven heads of state. We went to Ethiopia at the end of the 60s. We went there 70, 72. And we were there, I was there with a group of scholars in 73, the year the emperor uh, met with us and gave us his blessing to continue to work. And then within four months, he was removed physically. But spiritually, he is alive. Wow. Because in 1937, when he, became, when he got the leadership of Ethiopia, he stood before the world at the UN. There was no UN at that time. At the the, uh, the replacement for the UN. The UN replaced the League of Nations. He went before the League of Nations and said, Ethiopia stretched forth its arms unto God. We need help. The fascists are coming at us. The Italians with their mustard gas and whatnot. And the beginning of fascism, Franco in Spain, Hitler in Germany. And there was a, a plea by this black man to the world Help us. And it wasn't, it didn't happen. And he predicted 
the disaster that became World War II, where 100 million white folks were either killed or maimed in the insanity of materialism. So Haile Selassie took on himself this spiritual component because Ethiopia is sacred ground. And when Rosalind was there the last time, she got so excited because the spiritual uh, symbols were brought out and the people were moving through the streets and she could appreciate that cultural manifestation better than anybody else. So brothers and sisters, I'm just here to say Whatever my time is, I'm glad I can be here even if I am late. But I'm late because of a purpose. I've been filled with the spirit in so many ways. And when it can be reinforced and explained by those greats that you have here, uh, I just had to say in, in the Akan language, Madase, Madase P. That means many, many, many thanks. So continue the great work, continue to grow, continue to, to lay a foundation because we got to lead the world. We can't wait for the trumps and the numps and the bumps uh, to, to lead us. Thank you very much.